I have brought a numerical problem on Laplace equation. Let us solve it. The problem states that there are two conducting semi-infinite planes located at phi equal to 0 and phi equal to pi by 6. And they are separated by an infinitesimal insulating gap. The first point, semi-infinite. That means in some directions they may be finite and few directions they may be infinite. And their conducting planes must be having some charge on them. They are located at angle phi equal to 0 and angle phi equal to pi by 6. So this problem is either in cylindrical coordinate system or spherical. But the planes given cannot exist in spherical coordinate system. So it must be the cylindrical coordinate system. In spherical coordinate system, the surfaces are spherical in nature. These two planes are separated by an insulating gap. Insulating means dielectric gap because they are holding charges. One of the planes must be having positive charge, another one negative. So they have to be separated by an insulating gap. Next, the planes are maintained at a potential difference of 100 volts. And you have to find V and E in the region between the planes. The region between the two planes is insulating. Obviously, the fields exist in insulating medium. That is between the two conducting planes. Within the conductors, fields are zero. The formulation of this problem in diagram is given below. Look at this diagram. I have taken two planes, the conducting planes, and see their angular location. First one taken at phi equal to zero. Phi is always measured with respect to x axis. So the plane lies on x axis. Other one at an angle of phi by, pi by six from the first plane. First plane is assumed to be maintained at a potential of zero volts. Then the second plane potential is 100 volts because the potential difference is given as 100 volts. And you have shown a small gap, the insulating gap between the two conductors. So this problem is in cylindrical coordinate system. So let us start with the Laplace equation. We know that Laplace equation in terms of V is given by Laplace n of V is equal to zero. That is del square V is equal to zero. Let us expand del square V in cylindrical coordinate system. That is one by rho, rho by rho 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 into dou v by dou rho. The first term contains differentiation of v with respect to rho. Second term is 1 by rho square, dou square v by dou phi square. The third one, double differentiation of v with respect to z. This forms the expansion of the Laplace equation. From the problem, we know that V is a function of phi only. Here is a phi and phi. So the potential does not vary with respect to rho and z. So these terms are zeros. So we have to deal with only the term 1 by rho square and d square v by dz square is equal to 0. This is the Laplace equation for the given problem. So we have to find v. Before that, we have to remove 1 by rho square from the left hand side. So we shall put it to right hand side. Therefore, rho square into 0 gives us 
d square v by d phi square i'm sorry here it is and here also it's going to be phi is equal to zero according to the second term now we have to remove this differentiation in the left hand side to get v so we have to integrate v twice we have to integrate v twice to get v so first integration gives us dv by d phi equal to zero zero also be integrated because the integration to be applied on both the sides of the equation so integration of zero is zero plus a constant of a constant of integration let it be c1 an arbitrary constraint then one more integration of v gives us c1 phi we have to integrate on both sides so right side integration gives us c1 into phi plus one more constant of integration so we have integrated twice so we have introduced two constants of integration these two constants give an idea of the boundary conditions to be considered in the problem so therefore c1 and c2 can be found from the boundary conditions so we can state that c1 and c2 are arbitrary constants and are given by the boundary conditions the boundary conditions are the conditions at the boundary for example in this problem there are two conducting planes the fields are present only between the planes so the planes form the boundary at one plane v equal to 0 other plane v equal to 100 volts so these two are boundary conditions let us use these boundary conditions to find c1 and c2 now we shall use first boundary condition that is zero potential at the conducting plane where is this plane located at phi equal to zero so this first boundary condition is applied to equation number 1 therefore equation 1 becomes v equal to 0 here so it should be applied to equation 1 so it's equal to 0 c1 phi is also 0 plus c2 so therefore c2 is also equal to 0 so we have found one constant for one more second boundary condition needed that is v is equal to 100 volts this is the potential on the second conducting plane that is located at angle of phi by 6 so using this condition at equation 1 we make it another constant c1 let us try So apply this second boundary condition to the equation number one. What is the equation number one? V is equal to c1 phi plus c2. So by applying this one here, we'll get v is hundred. C1 is constant. Phi is pi by six, and c2 is zero from here. Therefore, constant c1 is equal to 600 divided by pi so both the constants are found let us substitute them 
into equation number one using the values of P1 and C2 in equation one. We get that is what happens for equation one. Equation one that is B equal to C1, which is 600 divided by pi. This is C1 into phi, the variable C2 value zero. So this is the potential distribution between the two conducting planes. Let us call this as equation two. So the equation two gives potential distribution. Potential distribution between the two conducting planes. Between the two conducting planes, what is there? Insulating medium or dielectric medium. So the fields are distributed within the dielectric medium. So we have already found the potential distribution. Now we shall continue towards finding electric field. Electric field E is given by the gradient of potential. So, when differentiation of V gives us E, we shall find E, electric field distribution. It is given by the equation minus del V, negative gradient of potential. But for cylindrical coordinate system, gradient of V is given by dou V by dou rho A cap rho, the rho component minus 1 by rho dou V by dou phi A cap phi, the phi component minus dou V by dou Z A cap Z. But in, the, in this problem, as we all know, V is a function of phi only, not with rho and Z. Therefore, E now becomes minus 1 by rho dV by d phi because there is only one variable phi for V. That's why no partial derivative is required. A cap phi. This is the equation required to find E. Now, Let us differentiate the V that is d by d phi of V is 600 divided by pi, pi is a constant into angle phi, angle phi into e cap phi. Let us differentiate now minus 1 by rho 600 by pi is constant phi differentiation of phi is 1 and the unit vector a cap phi this expression gives us the electric field distribution between the two conducting planes Observe here, phi, phi 
is the unit vector. So electric field is having a direction of minus a cap phi. That means electric field is rotational, circular. So this is the a cap phi direction. That is the direction of the electric field E. It is not in the radial direction as it is in the case of infinite light charge. So that is the solution for this particular problem. Thank you.